It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's nightly media roundup. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. Let's uh, get the graphics, get a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. We'll start by talking about the 2012 Nuclear Regulatory Commission Safety Assessment Hearing for Vermont Yankee, which is going on as we speak up at the high school. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about the FY14 budget, which has just got out of uh, the Appropriations Committee in the Senate. We'll go to Montpelier to find out more about that. Talk about a new uh, Jamaica Select Board member on our Seven Town Summary. Plus, we've got Brattleboro Core Arts, the uh, Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition's Lock Your Meds campaign, and plenty more all on deck. We're going to jam pack it in, so if you've got the time and the attention span, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this April 30th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. Last day of April here. I'm Roland Boyden. That's footage of last year's May Day celebration out over the waters of the Connecticut River uh, on Putney Road's now defunct Chesterfield Bridge, a yearly occurrence held by the Chesterfield Arc Bridge Society and documented by longtime BCTV volunteer uh, producer Karen Reardon. She's again preparing to participate in their May Day event, which consists of a classic maypole dance, clog dances, old-fashioned children's games, and plenty more. Uh, you can find last year's celebration. It's showing this week here on BCTV on Channel 8. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, other things shown on BCTV in a moment. But first, into the stories we go. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission hearing on their 2012 safety performance review for Vermont Yankee is our headliner for tonight. And the commission's pre-hearing open house has already begun, in fact, in the multi-purpose room at Brattleboro Union High School. Now, yesterday, the NRC did give the media a preview of their findings, with NRC Director of Reactor Safety for Region 1, Chris Miller, stating uh, that the commission had found the plant to be, quote, run in a well-regulated manner. There were some safety concerns turned up, however, but Miller has classified them as having low safety significance incidents like non-self-latching fire doors and unreplaced battery cells. Still, Brattleboro's highly active and vocal network of anti-Vermont Yankee affinity groups should have some concerns to voice tonight, with the usual dose of skepticism for the NRC's assessment capabilities, and with the stakes as high as they are for any issues that include nuclear power in the mix, we expect some heated video to follow. Now, at last year's assessment hearing, Chad Simmons of the Safe and Green campaign joined us live via webcast for a one-on-one -on -one interview with then-NRC spokesperson Diane Scrincy. Let's take a rewind in time. Many it has moved to meet energy's timetable rather than to look at the safety of this particular reactor. Can you comment on those concerns by members of this community? Sure. Um, and I understand that the community has concerns. Um, the NRC made a decision to renew the license for an additional 20 years for Vermont after an extensive um, review. We conducted a review to assure that, the, that they had um, programs and processes to manage the effects of aging for the period of extended operation. You can find uh, both BCTV and 545 Live on Facebook. We're going to post video uh, of tonight's hearing that we'll get uh, courtesy of hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez. Uh, we'll post some clips tomorrow, and it'll show all next week on BCTV as well. All right, moving on with the stories. Precious little time left in Vermont's 2013 legislative session. And all eyes are on the $1.3 billion FY14 budget bill, which goes to the Senate floor for debate tomorrow. After leaving the Senate Appropriations Committee $2 million lighter than the House version and $17 million less than the governor's original proposal. Now, among the cuts, or rather caps, uh, as Vermont lawmakers look to contain spending, are those to the state's welfare to work and reach up family assistance programs, something that has aid, organi uh, aid organizations around the state up in arms. But it's in keeping with the governor's original proposal. Other reductions from the Appropriations Committee include funding cuts for substance abuse and recovery programs, adult day programs, clinics for the uninsured, uh, and community justice centers. These are many items that had survived the House round of cuts before coming uh, under fire from the Senate. Earlier this month, following passage of the budget in the House, we spoke with Wyndham County Reps Mike Merwicki and Tristan Tolino about the intricacies of debating a bill of this size. One of the natures of, of the big bill conversations is that there are so many details and this first push to get it to the Senate 
is so fast uh, that you know you I, it seems to me that you really only have substantive debate as a whole body on on a handful of items within those big bills. Part of Montpelier Connection, a webcast program from the State House produced by Mike Murwicky, Wyndham District 4 rep, who uh, puts himself and often other Wyndham County reps behind the lens of his iPad to uh, screencast down here so that we can stay in touch with what's going on up there. You can find several episodes of Montpelier Connection at brattleboroughtv.org. Moving on, a new nationwide survey from the Center for Addiction at Columbia University has turned up wide discrepancies in teen drug use behaviors across the country, but one thing is true for teens in every demographic, in every region. Prescription drug abuse is on the rise. So much so that some experts say the next decade could see prescription drugs surpass alcohol as the drug of choice among teens. It's with that in mind that the Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition is helping bring the national Lock Your Meds campaign to the area, asking parents of teens to properly secure their active prescriptions and dispose immediately of any medications that are no longer needed. Something Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition Policy and Project Manager Cassandra Holloway says can be the key to keeping the teen or preteen in your home safe from the temptation of experimentation. We really care about it in our own community because we have high misuse of prescription drugs among our youth and we want to make sure that we take away any temptation, much like <clears throat> locking your alcohol cabinet. We want to make sure people are securing the drugs that they have. Um, but also getting rid of any that they don't need. The full PSA we did with Cassandra, you can head to brattlerotv.org or check out BCTV on Facebook. We'll post it up there and on our 545 Live YouTube page as well. All right. Moving on, the Brattleboro Planning Office may be used to dealing with maps for the various development projects they juggle, but a cultural map of the arts in our community is one they don't have on the files just yet. But with a $50,000 National Endowment for the Arts grant at the backing, the growing practice of cultural mapping has added itself to the repertoire. As the grant's subsequent group, dubbed Brattleboro Core Arts, continues to survey the role of art in our community. And tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. at the Brattleboro Food Co-op, uh, they'll be on hand to share findings from the project with members of uh, the three-person consultant team from the Conway School of Design that's joined Brattleboro Core Arts uh, there as well to break down the project's pre preliminary stages. Now, at a Core Arts open forum held early this year, Brattleboro Planning Director Rod Francis talked about the opportunities the project will provide the town. It's an exercise in... Um, visualizing and establishing the central importance of uh, artistic expression and uh, communication uh, for the community of Brattleboro. Again, that's tomorrow night at the Brattleboro Food Co-op at 7.30, Brattleboro uh, Core Arts presentation, and you can find uh, that full video that included the clip we just saw of Rod, courtesy, again, of hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez uh, at brattleborotv.org. It's called uh, Mapping the Arts. Okay, moving on. Renewable energy and cooperatives may sound like less than cutthroat business terms, but with the market clamoring for environmentally responsible energy production, the competition is on. And cooperatives are not immune. It's with that in mind that a German uh, engineering group, uh, including uh, the Heinrich Boll Foundation called Race to the Top, which aims to, quote, share practical insights into the ways of low carbon energy transition to create uh, local and cooperative business opportunities, has sponsored a week-long international energy forum at SIT which uh, unfolded all last week at the school's Brattleboro campus with presenters from across Europe and beyond like the Belgian Federation for Renewable Energy Cooperatives and Rescoop.B uh, involved, plus many more. The hardworking BCTV volunteer Kip Tewksbury was at SIT to gather footage from their kickoff where the event's SIT host and dean of their graduate institute, Daniel Yellowitz, talked about the importance of international collaboration. This is the kind of collaboration that we're really hungering for is to do some liaison and linkage with community organizations that not only think and act locally, but also think and act on a global level. Moving on, we get to talk about our seven towns summary. Here's this spiel that's so fun for me to say. The B and BCTV stands for Brattleboro, of course, but there are actually seven other towns in our surrounding community, including Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. And we cover select board meetings from every one of those municipalities. We also have a Leland and Gray school board meeting in there as well. This is all courtesy of our new field content producer, Rich Melanson, who has spent uh, the last year here at BCTV getting all of those select board meetings going for you to watch at brattleborotv.org and, of course, on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, just two clicks up the dial. 
uh, you can see all of those meanings. He's also been uh, writing me some notes so I can get uh, a few snippets here and there on each of our broadcasts, check in with what's going on around town. And uh, our episode of 545 Live today takes us to last night's Jamaica Select Board meeting where uh, they have uh, crowned a new Select Board member, Judy Flower. She was uh, on hand to uh, accept the position last night. Let's take a look. I would highly recommend Judy, therefore I would move that we appoint this. Uh... Oh, neighbors, aye. Aye, aye. Okay, Judy, um, would you please take a seat over there? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Again, you can find all of uh, the Jamaica Select Board meetings from the past year and uh, meetings from our uh, other seven surrounding communities all at brettlebrotv.org. All right, moving on, the United Nations World Health Organization yearly estimates uh, ranks the U.S. as having the second highest rate in the world of post-traumatic stress disorder among adults, something that should come as no surprise, say experts who testified before the Senate Committee on Veteran Affairs and its chair, Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders, this spring, though something that should come as a concern to all Americans, they say, even those not directly affected by the disorder. The recurring form of extreme anxiety, commonly known as PTSD, can affect anyone who's been exposed to a traumatic event, but is exceedingly prevalent among survivors of domestic and sexual violence and members of the armed forces. And while major strides have been made when it comes to combating PTSD, for soldiers, acknowledging the affliction at all often seems an insurmountable hurdle. While awareness is growing, for military personnel talking about your feelings is still a taboo, says Tom Simon, a Vietnam vet whose own struggles and triumphs over his PTSD was the subject for an open forum hosted at the Brattleboro VA's outpatient clinic at the end of last month. We've got a clip, let's take a look. I'm still getting vets reading my book going, hey, I thought I was the only one. Yeah. And I go, wait a second, we could say that in Vietnam 40 years ago because no one knew what PTSD was, it was shell shock, so I, but you guys, have all this, but they're still saying that. Yeah. All right, often we head down to Washington to check in with our reps, uh, including U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders, who's got his own YouTube channel, so we can uh, get some cross uh, footage across state lines there. But he's also been up to quite a lot here in Vermont, and thanks to our media exchange with other public access stations around the state, we've managed to gather some more footage of him, including uh, clips of him when he held a, uh, a special forum for seniors in the Northeast Kingdom. Now, the, this demographic, he says, uh, it's easy to seem like they've got uh, government on their side with a bunch of old white guys in suits uh, walking around Washington. But really, uh, their rights and uh, provisions from the government are at more risk than any other demographic, he says, hence the forum, where he talked, among other things, about the distribution of wealth among the American people. Top 1% owns 38% of the wealth in America. Okay? Got that? Who wants to guess what the bottom 60% of the American people own? They own 2.3%. All right, just a few things to wrap up here on BCTV. It's our Tuesday midweek edition, which means we get to launch into our new on BCTV feature and shamelessly promote some of the things that are coming up here on BCTV. We'll, uh, head into the split screen for that and start by looking at uh, Happy Spring in Brattleboro. Uh, this is, again, from hardworking volunteer Maria Dominguez, who's pumped out quite a lot of programming in the last couple weeks. Uh, you can take a look at this 10-minute program. A new BCTV producer, Russ Grabiak, who uh, produced that PTSD video we were looking at with Tom Simon a moment ago, uh, has also got uh, footage of the uh, American Legion new commander visit to Brattleboro. And if you watch the staff, you know, from the RNs, you know, down to the LNAs, down to the utility workers. The care that they provide our veterans, it's unbelievable. Again, uh, both of those programs show uh, right here on BCTV Channel 8 uh, all this week. You can find out all of their playback times, including the ones we just saw on the screen there, at brattleborotv.org, where subsequently all local programming uh, goes up uh, as uh, video available to watch uh, at your leisure, our video on demand. <laughs> All right, that's a full it uh, for this Tuesday. I'm going to get out there and uh, try and catch some daylight here as uh, we wrap up this work day here. Still uh, plenty of light, plenty of green, as you can see, and uh, the, the spring behind us. So hopefully you have time to get out there and enjoy the outdoors as well. Uh, in the meantime, remember, we'll be back Friday for another live edition, 5.45 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. That's all for me. Thanks. Night, everybody.